So BMS 271, looking at the arm and elbow, so a few muscles to begin with. We can't see trapezius here, or at least not much of it, um, but remember it does have upper, middle and lower fibres. Pectoralis major though, if we look at this upper limb model, we can see not all of it, but we can still see the two parts. So this part of pectoralis major here is the clavicular head, and you can see that's going to the clavicle. The rest of pec major, which is not here, but would have been the continuation of this small bit of muscle here, the rest of it is all going to be the uh, sternocostal head. So the much, much larger part of the muscle is the sternocostal head. Then with biceps brachii, of course, we have long and short heads. Now remember, the long head is lateral, the short head is medial, short head attaching to the coracoid process, and we can just see that here. Um, the long head, of course, going up through the joint capsule and attaching to the supraclenoid tubercle, but just remember long head lateral, short head medial. If they're going to be pinned in the exam, I'll make sure to pin them not right here where it's hard to tell whether it's uh, long or short. They'll be pinned on either side so that it's easy to tell as long as you know which is which. Then we have the triceps brachii, and with this one, the lateral head really is on the lateral aspect. If you're looking at the deltoid and the acromion and where the deltoid attaches here at the tuberosity, the deltoid tuberosity, which is facing laterally, if you can see part of the tricep and you're looking at this point of view, you're looking at the lateral head. Okay, It's probably the most prominent part of the muscle that stands out when someone's exercising, doing push-ups or something. Whereas the long head, you can tell that you're looking at that a couple of different ways. Firstly, it attaches up to the um, infraglenoid tubercle on the scapula, so it's the only fibres that are going all the way up to the scapula. You can see the tendon disappearing here between the teres uh, muscles. So we've got teres major here and, and then teres minor. So that's where it's going to go. But the fibres are pretty much directly posterior on the limb. So they're right on the back. So the lateral head really is lateral. The long head is posterior. And the medial head then is a smaller part here. Well, sorry, it looks like a smaller part here. It's more distal, so it's the distal part of the long head. And if you're looking at a specimen, it will have a dividing line here like it does on the model. And it is fairly easy to just gently move the fibres of the long head posteriorly and see that these fibres of the medial head are only coming up here onto the humerus under deep to the to the long head here. They're only coming up to the humerus, they're not coming all the way up to the scapula. And on a specimen you really usually can see that divide quite clearly. So that's the tricep lateral out here, long going up to the scapula and being very posterior on the limb. And then medial, similar to where the long is but more distal and with a clear line here dividing the two. Then with the deltoid, and oh no, the deltoid's fallen off. But with the deltoid, again, all you need to know, three divisions there, anterior, middle, posterior fibres. And again, if it's going to be pinned in an exam, I'll make sure that it's not on one of the boundaries between those lots of fibres. If I want you to say posterior, it'll be pinned right here on the back. If I want you to say anterior, right here on the front and middle, will be kind of directly in between the acromion and the deltoid tuberosity there, right in the middle of the muscle. Remembering that those three lots of fibres uh, kind of function separately, or can function separately. Then we've got the deltopectoral groove, and as I'm sure you could guess, that's a groove between the deltoid and the pec major. So there's a deltopectoral groove there running between those two muscles, little groove, and a vein travels through that groove. Does anyone know the name of the vein? Cephalic vein. So the cephalic vein runs up the lateral side of the arm here, lateral aspect of biceps brachii, travels through the deltopectoral groove and goes deep to the clavicle to join the subclavian vein. So if you're looking at a specimen and, and the vein is present, there'll be a vein travelling in that groove. So that's the deltopectoral groove. Then We've got brachialis. Now, uh, sticking with a lateral point of view that we've got here, we can see the long head uh, biceps brachii, and then brachialis, and then the lateral head of the tricep. So brachialis in between 
bicep and tricep on the lateral aspect, looking quite large on this model. On many specimens, it's not that big and not quite as visible. If you're having any trouble spotting it though, you can just lift the biceps brachii and find the brachialis deep to it. And that holds true for the medial aspect where it may be quite difficult to spot unless you gently lift the biceps brachii and find brachialis deep to it. But you can see some fibres of brachialis here on this model a little more distally. Remembering it is only found on the distal half of the humerus and then it crosses the anterior aspect of the elbow joint. So we can see it again here. Now coracobrachialis is more proximal. You can see it here coming from the, the about mid shaft of the femur on the medial aspect. Femur. <sighs> yes. So that was deliberate. Um, the mid shaft of the humerus. And then coming up to the coracoid process, remembering that the proximal parts of the coracobrachialis and the short head of the biceps brachii blend. So you won't be able to kind of tease them apart here, but you can further uh, distally here. So they'll be kind of blending here before attaching to the coracoid process. So that's coracobrachialis. Remembering that the um, musculocutaneous nerve actually enters that muscle, it comes in up here. And then lastly, for muscular structures, if we look at the distal end of the biceps brachii, we can see a large tendon here in the middle of the cubital fossa. Now that hopefully is easy to find, to palpate. But coming medially off that, we have the bicipital aponeurosis. So an aponeurosis is a broad flat tendon. This is the bicipital aponeurosis. It's fascia or connective tissue that comes from the biceps brachii. And then it's you're only seeing part of it here. You're seeing the part that covers the brachial artery. But then this fascia blends with the, the connective tissue fascia covering these superficial flexor muscles. So it will carry on over towards the medial epicondyle um, and the ulnar surface over here uh, covering the, these superficial flexor muscles.